And finally, the book of Luke, chapter 13. I'm going to be reading this one from the message because we've heard many parts of it before. But there are some golden nuggets in here which need to be spoken from the New King James. So I will do that. Um, so we ended with Yeshua saying, I came to start a fire on the earth. Um, literally to separate the wheat from the chaff. And then he said, about that time, some people came and told him about the Galilean pilot. Sorry, the Galileans pilot had killed while they were at worship, mixing their blood with the blood of the sacrifices on the altar. And Yeshua responded, saying, Do you think those murdered Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. And those 18 in Jerusalem the other day, the ones crushed and killed when the Tower of Siloam collapsed and fell on them? Do you think they were worse citizens than other Jerusalemites? Not at all. Unless you turn to God, you too will die. What does that mean? Do you think the people being put to death and the people dying um, by unnatural causes were huge sinners and that's why they were dying? He said, we are all sinners. Unless we turn to God, we will all perish. Repent and return. That's the, that, is, that is the message. Straight and simple. Repent. Repent of your sinful ways. Keep your eyes on your own sins. Don't keep looking at other people. What are they doing? How are they? Have you, have you repented? Do you know you are a sinner? Every one of us on this earth is a sinner. In God's eyes, none of us is without sin. Stop looking at other people. Look at yourself. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before God. Now, before you have to actually stand with in front of him. Everyone is trying to prove that they are better than someone else. Everyone is trying to say, oh, they are like that, they are like that. Well, how, are, how are we? How am I? Our, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Do you know that? Hmm. And then he says, then he told them a story. A man had an apple tree planted in his front yard. He came to it expecting to find apples, but there weren't any. He said to the gardener, what's going on here? For three years now I've come to this tree expecting apples. Not one apple have I found. Chop it down. Why waste good ground with it any longer? The gardener said, let's give it another year. I'll dig around it, put fertilizer. Maybe it will produce next year. If it doesn't, then chop it down. Who is the gardener? <sighs> if you've been enjoying God's special treatment without giving anything in return, if so, respond, respond to the gardener's patient care and start bearing the fruit that God has created in you to produce. If all you've done is take, take, take from God, take of his goodness, take of his mercy, take of his provision, you haven't given anything back. Start now. Start now. What does he want back from us? He wants us to care so much for each other that we can't bear to see one other person we love walking in an unregenerate spirit. He wants that all should come into repentance before him. The greatest act of love, the greatest act of love we can accomplish is to tell someone about salvation, is to tell someone that there is a way out. Someone has paid for you. Woe to those of us who turn around and say, who needs saving? I'm okay. 
I'm fine. I don't need a savior. God, help such a person. You know what? God is not to be mocked. And then he went on teaching at one of the meeting places. Whether these are their synagogues or what we would call temple, yeah, or church or whatever. And there was a woman so twisted and bent over with with arthritis that she couldn't even look up. She had been afflicted with this for eighteen years. When Yeshua saw her, he called her over and said, "Woman, you're free." He laid hands on her and suddenly she was standing up, straight and tall, giving God the glory. The meeting place president, the chief of the temple, furious because Yeshua had healed on the Sabbath and he said to the congregation, six days have been defined as work days. Come on one of the sa- six if you want to be healed, not on the seventh, not on the Sabbath. And Yeshua shot back, you fraud. You hypocrite. His favorite word to call people was hypocrite. You hypocrite. Each Sabbath, every one of you regularly unties your cow or donkey from its stall and leads it out for water and thinks nothing of it. So why isn't it all right for me to untie this daughter of Abraham and lead her from the stall where Satan has had her tied for 18 years? We have... We have compassion over our animals and we have no compassion over each other. Why? I love, I love the way he says this. You take your donkey to drink on a Sabbath. Why can't I take this daughter of Abraham and set her free from the prison that Satan has held her in? Being bent over like that, arthritis. What is he saying? All of these are prisons, that evil, Satan holds man in. You've just got to break break free. You've just got to say no more. No more. Diabetes has no, no, I repent for it. I repent for my ancestors, for whatever they did that caused these sicknesses to be laid upon my generation. Declare it, repent for it. Say, Father, forgive my, my generations back to 18 generations. And set myself and my future generations free. No more shall we suffer from arthritis. Yeshua has made it so very clear. I never even realized it until I started this reading. Reading aloud, I've realized it really makes you understand what the truth is. Because when you're reading in your mind, somehow it it doesn't, there are things you miss out. But reading like this aloud has made me see things so clearly. Yeshua so very clearly in every chapter has said sickness is from the devil or a curse from God, which God has allowed Satan to put on you because of generational sin. And there is a way out. So it's not just salvation. It's not just eternal life. It's freedom from sickness and sin. In this life, Yeshua came to set us free from sickness and sin in this life. He says, I've set you free. Look what he did. He said, daughter, stand up. What did he say? Let's let's see it again. What did he say? Woman, you're free. He laid hands on her. She stood tall. She had arthritis. She was bent over. Bent over, double. That means her spine wasn't straight. And people will put their faith and their trust in doctors and surgeons and science and medicine and spend all their money, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, trying to get healed in the flesh when the issue is a spiritual one. Yeah, how does that compute? Hmm. Anyway, then he says, when he put it that way, his critics were left looking quite silly and red-faced and the congregation was delighted and cheered him on. I tell you. Um, And then when he said these things, his adversaries were put to shame 
and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that he had said and done. And then he said, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and put it in his garden. And it grew and it became a large tree. And the birds of the air nested in its branches. Means it's such a tiny thing. But you plant it in good soil and it will become into this mighty thing. And eagles will come and rest on it. Rest in it. Yeah. And then he said, To what shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, yeast, which a woman took and hid it in three measures of meal, flour, until it was all leavened. You put a little bit of God in you and let it rest, and very soon it has converted the whole of you and made you rise up. Rise up. And then he went through the cities and the villages, teaching, journeying towards Jerusalem. And then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say, will seek to enter and not be able to. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. He will answer you and say, I do not know you or where you come from. And then you will begin to say, we ate and we drank in your presence. We taught, you taught in our streets. And he will say, I tell you, I do not know you and where you are from. Depart from me, from me all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. They will come from the east and the west, north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first and first who will be last. And on the very day, some Pharisees came and said, get out, depart from here. Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, go tell that fox, behold, I cast out demons and perform curses today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must journey today, tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. It cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who killed the prophets and stones those who are, who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. See your houses left to you desolate, and assuredly I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes that you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He says it here. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killer of prophets, abuser of the messengers of God. How often I longed to gather your children, gather your children like a hen, her brood safe under her wings. But you refused and turned away. And now it 